Introduction to Classical Tibetan, Lesson 3.3. Transitive and Intransitive Verbs and Terminating Particles. The last two types of verbs are transitive and intransitive verbs. It's important to be able to distinguish between these two kinds of verbs. Transitive verbs have a subject that acts on a different object. For example, the verb to eat is transitive. When I say I eat an apple, there is the subject I and the object apple. The subject is doing something to the object. This is contrasted with intransitive verbs where there is no direct object. The sun rises, for example, is a sentence in which the verb rises is intransitive. The subject, the sun, does the rising. The sun isn't rising something else. Some verbs can be both transitive and intransitive. For example, the verb walk in English can function intransitively when we say he walks. He is the one doing the walking. However, it can also function transitively if we say something like he walks the dog. Now, the action of walking is being applied to a different object, the dog. In Tibetan, there are some important distinctions that occur with respect to transitive and intransitive verbs. Let's start by looking at transitive verbs. Sentences with transitive verbs have subjects that are marked by particles called agentive particles. We'll cover agentive particles in detail next week, but all you need to know about them for the time being is that they mark the agent of an action. Like the connective particles, the spelling of an agentive particle changes depending on the syllable that comes before it. They can be spelled ki, gi, gi, sa, or yi. After da, ba, or sa, the spelling is ki. After ga or na, the spelling is gi. After na, ma, ra, or la, the spelling is gi. And after an achung suffix or no suffix at all, the spelling is sa or yi. Sa is added to the end of a word without adding an extra syllable, while yi is attached as a separate syllable. The basic structure of a sentence with a transitive verb is this. Agent, agentive particle, direct object, transitive verb. Sometimes the direct object is marked by a la particle, but not always. Let's look at some examples. Sangye ki chu den. The agent, Sangye, Buddha, is marked by ki, the agentive particle. Notice that the particle is spelled kayata kya ki ku ki sa ki because the last syllable in Sangye has a sa suffix. The verb here is ten, meaning taught. And that leaves us with the object, chu, Dharma. So we end up with the Buddha taught the Dharma. Let's try another one. Kong gi na la ta. Kong is the agent marked by gi. The verb ta means look. And the object is na marked by la, meaning at in this case. So we have he or she looks at me. Remember that these kinds of sentences can also exist with nominal groups as agents and objects. Let's try this one. First, let's look at the verb. It's tun, meaning give or teach, and it's transitive. Now, where is the agent? Look for the agentive particle. The agentive particle is here this sa, which marks lama. Before this word, we have bupa and a connector particle. So we know that bupa is connected to lama. So we end up with the lama who is Tibetan, or more simply, the Tibetan lama, which leaves us with the rest of these words for the object. Chakcheng gi damna. Here, we see the connector particle gi linking chakchen, meaning Mahamudra, and Dhamma, oral instructions. So this nominal group together is oral instructions of Mahamudra, or it's better said as oral instructions on Mahamudra. So to put everything together, we say the Tibetan Lama teaches 
oral instructions on Mahamudra. Remember, if you ever feel overwhelmed by a long sentence, look for the particles and try to break it apart into smaller groups. Now, let's look at sentences with intransitive verbs. An intransitive verb has a subject in the nominative case, meaning it is not marked by a particle. It has no direct object. So, for example, we can say, Nima shar. The verb here is shar, rose, which leaves us with the subject. Nima, sun. The sun rose. Let's look at another one. Hong vula dro. We have the verb dro, meaning go, and we have a subject, kong. Here, bu is marked with a la particle, but note that this is the location where the subject goes and not the direct object of the action of going. This is an important distinction to keep in mind. So this sentence reads, he goes to Tibet. Many Tibetan verbs have transitive and intransitive forms. Look at page 37 of your textbook for some examples. Also, note that ma and mi can be placed in front of verbs to make them negative. So we could say, kong bula mindro, he doesn't go to Tibet. That's a basic overview of verbs in Tibetan. Let's just review a couple of things before moving on. When reading passages in Tibetan, it's important to keep in mind that the subject or agent is often omitted if it can be inferred from context. It's very common to mention the subject once and then omit it in all sentences afterwards. Sometimes the object can be omitted too. It's important to keep in mind that each of the four different types of verbs indicates a different sentence structure. Refer to the handout associated with this week's lesson for a helpful review of the four basic sentence structures. Every Tibetan sentence can be written according to one of these four basic structures, although extra information can be added. We will start to learn more about particles over the next few weeks, and we'll see how these basic sentence structures can be expanded. Finally, let's talk briefly about terminating particles. These are found frequently in classical Tibetan, and mark the end of a sentence or an idea that is carried over several sentences. Terminating particles are made by simply repeating the last letter of the last syllable and adding a nodal. For example, Na Hula Yudo. I am in Tibet. The do is added at the end because the syllable before it, yu, ends with a da suffix. This syllable doesn't add any literal meaning to the sentence. It simply marks the end of an idea. These terminating particles are frequent in classical Tibetan. If there is no suffix in the preceding syllable, an achum with a naro is added. After a da post suffix, a ta naro to is the terminating particle. We've covered a lot of information today. To review, transitive verbs have an agent that acts on a direct object. Intransitive verbs have a subject that does not take a direct object. The type of verb in a sentence determines the structure of the sentence and the particles to look out for. Terminating particles mark the end of a sentence or the end of an idea spread out over multiple sentences.